For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. The United Nations Office of the Council of Human Rights has released a list of 112 companies which operate on illegal Israeli settlements on occupied Palestinian lands. This includes 18 international companies and 94 Israeli companies. And these settlements are considered to be a war crime under international law. So to talk about this list and also understand what these settlements are and also understand what operating on these settlements means, we have with us Apurva, the South Asia coordinator of the Boycott, Divestments and Sanctions Movement. So Apurva, can you first explain to our viewers what exactly these illegal settlements are? Right. Uh, the 1967 boundaries between uh, uh, Israel and the Palestinian territories, the occupied Palestinian territories, uh, have been encroached upon consistently uh, by the state of Israel through these settlements. What that means is that starting from 1967, the Israeli state has supported uh, building outposts, building entire residential colonies, universities, uh, industries within the occupied territories, uh, occupied Palestinian territories, uh, which, as you said, uh, is, is a war crime, is, is a war crime under the Fort Geneva Convention because this implies transfer of prop, uh, transfer of population and uh, changes to the property of an occupied territory. Yes. Now, uh, Israel has always been s s in denial of this when asked about it, but uh, there has been research even from, uh, uh, from an independent investigation that was sort of sent by the Human Rights Council uh, in 2012. And apart from many other uh, studies that have shown that the Israeli state since, since the six, 1967 and starting from that has actually supported the construction of these settlements, given them tax breaks to people who live over there, made it cheaper to actually live over there because this is part of the uh, plan of the state of Israel to annex the occupied territories. Uh, and these uh, settlements have grown exponentially over these years uh, and it's a key contention because this is also entailed in the Trump plan where he where, where it's asked that these settlements be accepted uh, but what is it is essentially saying is to accept a war crime uh, and to go forward with the fragmentation and, and turning of the occupied Palestinian territories occupied West Bank uh, into Bantu stance. That's what the settlements do, which is that they fragment uh, the, cont the contiguity of the land of the occupied West Bank, mm. uh, and especially around the Jerusalem area. Hmm. And of course, these come at the expense of moving Palestinians from their homes and displacing yes. them. Yes, so, 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 so it entails dispossession and displacement of Palestinians to begin with. Uh, you would have heard about a number of home demolitions. One happened just last year, one of the biggest ones in recent years, where about 1,000 uh, people were displaced. Their entire residential complex was demolished. Hmm. Uh, that's also in the Greater Jerusalem area. And it's part of how the settlements grow, which is that you first say that this is illegal, then the Israeli state will come and demolish. Uh, they'll first say that it's a military camp or they'll and slowly or, or in other ways um, encroach upon Palestinian lands. But also aside from that, in within the occupied West Bank, this also means that uh, the, I mean, the, it, it has a huge amount of costs for Palestinians. Farming is nearly impossible uh, in the occupied West Bank because of this, because uh, it, it is a lot of these settlements are in rural areas, are in, are in areas which are actually farms of Palestinians. And because that encroachment, they can't actually uh, get to their land and, and farm their own lands. That's actually one of the biggest costs of it. Uh, this, the, the theft of water and, and land is actually key to the colonization project of Israel and is essential to the settlements project. Um, it also means that Palestinians are not free to move even within the occupied territories because the settlements, as I said, that they break up the contiguity of the land of occupied West Bank. So there are all settlements are connected by set, uh, roads which are only used by settlers and by Israel. So even for a Palestinian to go from one place to another, they have to take a longer route because they cannot uh, cross that area of a settlement. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it restricts their freedom of movement, has a lot of economic cost. It is, it is a reason for displacement and dispossession. Uh, and it's also... Um, the key, the key aspect here is, uh, one of the key things here is that it is what um, clearly prevents the self-determination of the Palestinian people because, uh, because it, it actually says that they cannot actually be a contiguous uh, uh, West Bank, which, which de de sort of demolishes the idea of a future state of Palestine because you're breaking up the territory which is supposed to be a future uh, uh, state of, independent state of Palestine, according to the uh, two-nation uh, idea. Hmm. And now moving on to what the list is. So what, yeah. So what exactly is this list, which the UN has now released? What 
why are these companies on this list and what have they been accused of? Yeah, so uh, this is a long project. Uh, it's a long series of things that have led to this moment. And if you could just give me a little bit of time to explain how this came about, this understanding came about. Uh, in 2005, uh, the International Court of Justice gave an advisory opinion saying that the wall, which goes all along and is constantly expanding, and it's part of the settlement project of Israel, uh, you know, which snakes all over West Bank, the Palestinian uh, occupied territory of West Bank, that the wall itself and the settlements uh, is illegal. This was the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice. And that uh, not only should Israel end this project and withdraw from it and compensate Palestinians for it, all um, organizations, businesses, and third states, like sort of, sort of nations which are not Israel and Palestine, which support it, uh, are also um, sort of enabling it, so they should stop doing that. And this was this was said by the ICJ advisory opinion. Moving on from that, uh, there have been a number of steps taken by the Human Rights Council, one of which was uh, the independent fact-finding team that I said it had sent. Uh, in 2016, there was a resolution passed. It's called the Resolution 3136, which then called uh, for a database of these companies uh, to be prepared. Uh, and 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 it has a specific set of criteria. It says that businesses that support the settlement, uh, 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 businesses, and so businesses that enable a lot of the things that I said before for against the Palestinians that displace them, that uh, hinder their economic uh, growth and productivity, that hinder their movement. These mm -hmm. these are the criteria under which uh, what qualifies as a settlement enterprise uh, for the UN Human Rights Council is understood. So the businesses, all of them that have been listed, in some or the other way violate uh, Palestinian rights in, in, in under those categories that we spoke about before. So there's a whole list around it. Mm -hmm. And finally, this list has been published now. It's taken three years for it to be published. Uh, and, uh, you know, human rights groups from all over the world have been asking for this list to be published since a long time. And clearly, there was pressure from Israel and United States for it to not be published. Uh, but but it's, it's a huge step forward for the Human Rights Council to have actually published this finally. And what will be the impact for these companies now? Have they been explicitly declared illegal or is it just a way of, you know, just a list which shows, okay, these companies are there and they're doing, operating on illegal land. Mm. So, you know, just a way of yeah. listing them. But what, what will be the impact? What will they face now? So, well, they will face uh, clearly a lot of, uh, so, so what they're saying is that the activity of supporting the settlements is illegal uh, and that they should end those activities. And it also says that, um, and this is a list that they have said that they will keep updating. So this is not, uh, uh, you know, like just the only in the final list and that they have to prove how they have ended those uh, uh, sort of business engagements with the settlements. Uh, the implications that it has is that it really mounts up the pressure on these companies to uh, go on engaging with settlement activities. Uh, and it also gives a chance, and it's it, in a sense, it's one of the first ways in which any UN entity has given, uh, has taken a concrete step in the direction of the illegal activity of settlements. Mm -hmm. uh, it has said that operations with these are illegal. It amounts to pressure on all these companies to end those ties. And it also gives a boost to the campaigns of boycotts and divestments against these companies, because you here you have a UN entity saying that this is, this is illegal activity. You know, and and it, 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 it has business implications, but it also has implications within the larger framework of international law because this is illegal under international law. That's not something you can easily get away with. So this feeds into other future steps that the UN and such bodies might take in this direction. So in that sense, the concreteness of this is, is really what is the most uh, remarkable aspect of having actually saying that these are the companies that have been working uh, in illegal settlements and they should stop this activity and anyone supporting it is actually contributing to something which is a violation of international law. Hmm. And the BDS has said in its statement that this list is still incomplete. So can you yeah. tell us what companies have been left out and why do you think they've been left out? Uh, so it's interesting how also, how, how is it understood what companies do this? Because this takes a huge amount of research to find this out. And in that sense, this is the fact that this is out it also reflects the, the diversity of movements that have worked on this issue. So there is an Israeli research center called Who Profits that are American, there's an American organization called Investigate. These are some of the examples of organizations that have actually done the detailed work of which are the companies that are working in settlements. They have evidence to show all of it. Um, from that understanding, uh, from the understanding of various human rights groups uh, working on this issue, there are a lot more companies that have even more, that have really grave, um, that have done a lot of more grave violations on this. I mean, an example, uh, uh, 
would be Teva, which is a huge pharmaceutical company, Israeli pharmaceutical company working from the settlements, profiting from the settlements. Uh, HP, the H HP Enterprises, the spin-off DXE technology works from settlements. Israeli arms industry is completely out of it, which is like a huge obvious gap i mean so so what you can see actually is that some of the really powerful companies have have not uh, made it to this list uh, which are, which are known to have been working in in the settlements so clearly the pressure so so are actually one of the things we're trying to say is that the uh, unhrc should not give in to this pressure and actually uh, continue to update this list with more companies that uh, that have been working in the settlements uh, there is netafim for example which uh, netafim is a very good case because netafim is also a company which is enlisted for subsidy in a lot of indian states uh, so uh, and, and netafim is a company which is key to um, stealing Palestinian lands and waters in the occupied West Bank for the services of settlement. So this is actually one of the things, like I said, which hinders the agricultural productivity of Palestinian farmers. And here you have this company enlisted in what is essentially a legitimation of this company. You know, if you enter the subsidy list of a state government in a, in a region as huge as you know Karnataka or Tamil Nadu, mm -hmm. you have a lot of profits coming in from there and you also get legitimation from state governments. Mm -hmm. And the key thing is that having this list, list published now means that we can go and ask these governments to respond to this and to not actually work with NetFM. I mean, NetFM is not on the list, but it works in settlements. So, so this actually, when you say what is the concrete implication, this is, for example, a concrete implication. And NetFM is one such company that clearly contributes to that colonization, contributes to settlements, and, and should, um, should, should, should pay the cost for, actually, for, for, uh, for that activity. Hmm. And uh, what has been the response from Israeli authorities and also Palestinian political parties and organizations? Well, uh, Israeli is, so uh, Israel and and the U.S. Uh, stepped out of the Human Rights Council a few years ago. Yeah. So so uh, and they have said that I mean they have gone on the other end and said uh, the president uh, has said that they are proud of these companies and he's even mentioned companies which are not even on the list. So it's quite curious. But they have, as usual, uh, uh, gone on the opposite and on the offensive. But 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 I guess the point is that their impunity is exactly what is being called out by something like this list. So, so that's, the, that's the key thing we should take away from this. Uh, the Palestinian Authority has also welcomed this, as, as, has, as have uh, all sorts of human rights organizations that have worked towards it, including the BDS movement, uh, because this, this, in, this um, enlivens the campaigns that have been going on for all these years, calling for these companies uh, to be held accountable mm -hmm. for profiteering from, from war crimes, literally. I mean, if I had to put it in a sentence, this is not just enabling war crimes, you're profiteering from war crimes, and that's something that must be held, that they must be held accountable to. And, and to, to take that forward and to strengthen those campaigns is, is how we, we look forward to uh, going on on this. And finally, uh, what is now <coughs> BDS's future plan and what campaigns is it planning after this list has come out? So the BDS movement has called uh, for all states, institutions, uh, uh, churches, universities uh, to to end their ties with these companies that are there on this list. Uh, and in, in a larger sense, it, it sort of gives energy to our campaigns that call for, uh, for accountability from Israeli state and corporations and institutions that profit from the colonialism, apartheid, and occupation against the Palestinian people. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's energizing for us as a movement as well. Thank you, Apoorva, for joining us today. And that's all the time we have. Thank you for watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, can't